Hello everyone, this is Otaku Showboat here, and today we are going to be converting a red Game Boy Advance SP system, not this one, but a red one, into this blue Game Boy Advance SP unhinged full aluminum body system. This will take a while, this will take several videos, please if you enjoy these videos, be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below the video. Leave likes, comments, subscribe, etc., etc. And look forward to however many videos this is going to be. Because this, this process took me about five hours, over four hours of recording time. So please enjoy the edited version. Why, hello everyone. This is Otaku Showboat. Today we are going to be taking this red Game Boy Advance SP001, AGS001, and we are going to be putting it into a brand new case made out of metal. The unhinged V2 case from Boxy. Not only are we going to be putting this thing into a new case, we're going to be giving it a 1700 milliamp hour battery, as well as, you know, aluminum buttons for the aluminum case, and we're going to be giving it a USB-C upgrade, charging upgrade, and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Among probably more things as well. For now, though, let's disassemble. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. Of course, we this is not going to be a complete upgrade unless we also include a wonderful IPS screen. This is a uh, IPS screen by Funny Playing, I believe it is their, also their version 2 of their IPS screen. Uh, this one has a laminated front cover that does not have uh, the Game Boy Advance uh, logo on it. So yeah, we're going to be we're going to be testing this out as our very first thing once we've gotten our red Game Boy Advance here disassembled. That is, of course, going to be our step one. We have to take apart this working Game Boy Advance SP. Now, I was going to be doing this to a silver one, but at this moment in time, I have not received the link cable part that I need that uh, needs to be replaced on that system. So we're going to be going with this one, which is fully working. As, as you can see, it loads up. It's got nice loud volume on it, and I've got a game somewhere over the rainbow, around, on this desk. Here, I have, I have this. You'll also notice I've got the, uh, I've got the soldering iron and I have gloves on. And I will have a mask on as well once, once we get into the soldering aspect. There it goes. It's loading. The game. The game is playing. There, there you go. I hope you can see. I hope you can see that the game is playing. So, and it, all the buttons are working. I've already uh, tested this. It's fine. I bought this as four parts on eBay, as in the person didn't think it was working. And at the time, no, it was not working. Uh, what did it need? A battery. Uh, this plate was bulging when it arrived in the mail meaning that uh, the lithium-ion battery was damaged. Uh, it was bloated. Now, this is actually the second system I have received that had a bulging battery. That was the only reason that the thing was not getting power. I've had, I've had two of these now. This one, this happened to be the only thing that was wrong with it. So, fortunately, very fortunately, 
uh, we don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, that being said, I haven't actually tested the, the link port on these, uh, so yeah, there's, there's that. Uh, so Phillips said screwdriver on the battery door, of course. Uh, we're going to not be using my 850 milliamp hour battery for this build going forward. Uh, we'll need to have it handy for testing out the new screen. Uh, then we're going to move on to the Phillips head screwdriver. Not Phillips, the, uh, the tri-wing screwdriver, excuse me, for the remaining... Ah, is this my tri-wing? No, that's a Phillips. No, that's another Phillips. Where's my tri-wing? Tri-wing. Hi. This this is a tri-wing. This is a tri-wing. Yeah, that that's better. That's easier. That's coming out now. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead until I've gotten all uh, six of these screws out. Okay, we got all six of the screws out. I'm actually going to close that so we can we can keep an eye on this from this top-down view here in this way taking this section off. Now, I am probably going to reuse this. Uh, there isn't a bespoke section of the back of the uh, unhinged V2 uh, case that is meant for putting these stickers, uh, as well as this sticker right here. There's not a, like, dedicated part for that as the, uh, yeah, as we just lost this piece. Make sure not to lose this square or the power switch. That would be bad. All right, so we're we're in. We we're, we're in. There are three more screws uh, inside. These are just the regular Phillips head screws yet again. So we have the one Phillips head on the battery door, and then the th and then three on the inside of the Game Boy Advance SP. Now we also need to be very careful once we unhook this. Uh, now note that this is a Game Boy Advance SP 101, uh, and, or blah, 001, excuse me, this is not the 101, and we can tell even, even though we have this sticker here that says this is a 001, if the thing is focusing on this, if we're focused and centered, uh, it says 001, but this right here, this, this is what will define like the big like of all the things that are different between the two boards the first thing to look for is this guy this guy is only present on 001 boards as far as i'm aware uh, now i'm going to pull up here and see that the the buttons have decided to stick to the board as well uh, and and the pads have decided to stick to the board let me get these pads off and the the button for the light decided it wanted to come off as well. Get back in there, you. Get back in there, you. There we go. And then I'm being very careful not to lift this board too awfully much. You can't really see it at this angle, but right in there we've got we've got a ribbon cable, and we need to detach this ribbon cable just like that. Uh, now. I am going to need this speaker as well, so, but I'm going to leave this speaker in here for now. And we are going to set this off to the side. Because uh, we are going to need, we're actually going to need these pads. I Forgive me, I completely forgot this particular build. We do reuse these pads, so it's not a, uh, that's not a spare part I'll be able to use uh, for this uh, later on. All right, well, here we are. We've got, uh, we've got the board out. Now what? So the first thing we need, to do, we need to do is test our screen now that we have the system apart. Um, because if the screen is bad, well, then I a, can continue with a different screen. I actually have two of these screens. Uh, they're a little bit different on the uh, logo. This one doesn't have any logo, whereas the other one that I have happens to just have the SP, I'm pretty sure, uh, on it. So... There we go. It is in white. I got it. I got this particular one with a white frame. So we'll have a dark blue case with a white frame around the screen. Uh, the screen is covered with plastic. We do not want to remove that 
uh, until we are absolutely ready to and have to. Now, it has this piece of foam that will, of course, rest on the back once we get everything sorted. And we have this ribbon cable right here. Now, if I can open this, there we go. Get this ribbon. We have a ribbon cable and we have a wire, a small wire that's in here. So we want to make sure not to lose that wire. Come on. Come on, you. Get out. Get out. Okay, we got that out and we left the wire. So the wire, when we are fully installing this, there is a there is a pad. If we can get this in the shot, there is a pad that is on here that we need to solder the wire to. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is a thing. We need to actually solder the wire to that, and then it gets soldered onto a point on the board, uh, on this side of the board. At least I believe it's on this side. I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's one of these test pads that's the easy way to go. It's a test pad that connects to the uh, button for brightness, and that actually gives you the ability to control uh, the brightness on this board. Now, how does this thing connect to the screen? Well, we've got this little thing here. This little thing here, and it connects... this way you have to like be pretty careful be pretty careful with it because it's got a interface right there for this thing and it's like it just bends over and it should go in this is a little small come on you get in there Okay, I got it. I got it in it. It like snaps in. I'm I was trying to be as careful as possible with pushing this in, but they they mate and they snap. So it's it's a pretty permanent connection uh that this makes. Uh so what we're going to do to test this out, we have to get the cable in obviously. Gotta get that cable inserted and locked into place. Pretty sure that's in all the way. And just being very, very careful here. Uh, let's get our game into the game cart. And now we gotta pull out that battery that we had before. The one that we originally had in here. I'm just pushing it up against the uh, the pads there. Let's get this all in frame. Just pushing it so that when I flip power, there it goes. It's on. Now of course we don't have any uh, volume. Oh, it didn't it didn't detect the game. I have the game. Ah, it's, it's not actually in there very well for the game, I guess. Huh. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got it. It's playing. Yeah, there we go. It's playing. Now, to just examine the board, everything is looking okay. I can just pay attention to OK, 
Okay, what's that on? Is that on the plastic? I think that's just on the plastic. Yeah. So that is looking okay. Of course, the game froze on me. Yeah, it looks good. And this is a very bright environment, and I can make that out clearly. I don't know. I don't know about you on that screen up top, but I can make out that clearly. So we know that the screen works and the screen, excuse me, as I bring my leg up and hit everything and make big noise everywhere, the screen works. We can move on. We know that that works. Holla freaking Luya, the screen works. So I'm gonna put this someplace safer off to the side. Way off to the side. We will get to you again in a little bit. For now, I just have to pop this volume slider back on. Uh, by the way, with Game Boy Advance SPs, if you if if you didn't know this, uh, it will depend on like batch basically. I don't I don't know exactly how to tell the difference, but there are some volume sliders that have a detachable slider and some that do not that are actually integrated as part of the actual volume slider mechanism. They are not detachable. Uh, both of my personal ones are not detachable. Uh, actually, I've I've harvested one of these already for a different Game Boy Advance system uh, just because I was impatient and didn't want to wait for uh, replacement ones to arrive in the mail. But yeah, just it's interesting to note that. All right, so pull the game out. The board is ready to go set that aside what is the next item on our agenda so the instructions for the unhinged v2 state that uh, it would be a good idea to take your screen flex cable and wrap some tape around it some of this stuff to put to put some of this stuff around it um as an added layer of protection against damage i don't know about that uh at least we'll think about that when we're about to install the screen for now though uh, i'm pretty sure that these pieces are done so i can really put those aside it is time to open up the unhinged v2 oh boy oh boy so what do we have in here we have some fasteners we have some more fasteners we have some more fasteners wow that's a lot of uh that's a lot of screws <laughs> and we have a few other things falling out hopefully nothing got scratched when that happened so yeah we've got uh this is the battery door for it. Nice, nice machined metal. This is the bottom housing that is going to hold the, uh, the battery right in this compartment. It's got nice uh, cutouts there to run our wires for the battery. We've got this piece. This piece, I believe, is what goes on to uh, the back, uh, it goes on pretty much just like so. It goes in right there. Uh, and this is the back of the unit that goes over the screen. So we've got this for the back, this for the screen, and then... This guy over top, although why it wasn't able to, I guess it slides in. How do you slide in? Cause you've got these, it's got these little 
cutouts there. Was I upside down? Probably. Yes, I was upside down. So those tabs are, uh, they're, they go down. They, they go down. They're on, they're on one side of the board and not the other, basically. So it only fits in one way to show the boxy pixel logo. And then we have two screws to seal it up there. Now, as I said before, there's no bespoke area for the, um, for the stickers, the GVASP stickers. So you can, you can sort of see that if I try to put this sticker, this AGS001 sticker on the bottom, it goes over the door and we need to be able to access the door. Uh, now, the warning sticker, that can go on to this back panel quite easily. So the top is probably where I'm going to have to have this and it will cover most of the top if I even have it. And we have these like decorative uh, insets here that, you know, get covered up if I put the sticker over top and that sticker pretty much is the whole this whole length and it it covers these sides so i might not actually use this sticker use use either sticker and just leave it blank uh just because of that i wish if they make a version three of this if they make a version three of this i wish it had a bespoke area to put the original sticker i would like to peel this off and put it onto uh, my unhinged uh, so the thing about the unhinged is that it does come with ports for the USB-C and three and a half millimeter jacks. It actually comes with it. It's glorious. Now we begin with the front of the case. So let's set those other pieces aside. We begin with the front. Now there was some stuff in the instructions about like some trimming, of things for the buttons uh, we're not going to do that we're not going to worry about that at all um, we start off by putting the buttons in so here are uh, the buttons oh yeah we also have to harvest the shoulder buttons um, I don't believe that they make uh, the full aluminum shoulder buttons for the Game Boy Advance SP if they do, they're out of stock right now, um, just so we are aware. We are all aware of that. All right, so that's... That one has a little dot on the top. This one and this one are flat, so that's how I know the difference between which is the... Uh... Actually, you know what? That one didn't have a dot. It did it. They're all the... Are they all the same? Are they all just flat? Yeah, they're all just flat. Yeah, that it would have been nice to have the but the actual icon on here. But I guess neither I guess none of the buttons have any iconography of like A B X Y on them. It would have it would be nice to have that, but oh well. We got our we got our D-pad at least. That's the proper ish shape uh, that goes in there now we will be needing the original speaker uh, now there are speakers that you can get that would be upgrades for this it almost looks like we have extra space in here um, so this is actually not a very high wattage speaker uh, and there are amps you can actually get amps for the game boy advance sp like the whole game boy line honestly amps and quote-unquote power cleaners that uh will make it so that the line stays clear um but the thing with those amps is that you can easily blow out a stock speaker and okay so the stock speaker actually just fits in pretty far back and away that's interesting 
may need further modifications to this if I were to, say, want to install a, uh, like, one and a half watt speaker that's for the Game Boy Advance that has, like, wires coming out of it uh, to install it to an amp. Um, this might need a little bit of adjustment. I'm not particularly sure. It might fit down in there. We've got a little bit of an offset, but we shall see about that. We, we shall see about that as we go along. Uh, and the actual placement of the speaker, it could, it could be lower down uh, in that sort of a setup because it is going to be wired directly into the, the amp chip, which is wired into the board. All right, so we have those, I suppose. that I can get the pads on now. So that is pad one. So it, what's interesting here is it actually digs into the existing pad in these thingies. I hope that's I hope that's good. It's like there's a little bit of play on the button itself. If I lift it up, it's probably going to be easier. There's like a, just a bit of play there on the exact placement. It slots in fine, I guess. All right, grab that one. Stick it over, grab this one. Stick this one over. And grab this one and stick this one over. Huzzah! We have... We have a da buttons. We have a da buttons. Those are there, but I may want to uh, at least temporarily not have this here for when doing work on the three and a half millimeter and USB C jacks. If I'm going to be soldering with those, uh, <laughs> I may not want to have this rubber anywhere near that, and I might also not have the speaker either. Make sure we get the protective cover for the speaker with it so that it doesn't get damaged. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick that up for now. Uh the next thing um is in the rear housing uh we have these recessed holes in the rear housing. Uh, just to check if you have a Phillips head screwdriver that can fit down in that recess. Uh, of course, mine can absolutely fit into that recess, so we are good to go on that front. And that is to get the screws into these four pegs here. Moving right along, the next step is actually to pull out, if I can find where I put them, uh, pull out a part that's in here uh, that is technically free when you purchase this kit. Uh, it's a separate item listing. It's a separate listing on uh, the website, but you get a discount applied automatically when you have the unhinged V2 and this item in here. This is a diffuser, uh, LED light diffuser. This is for your power and uh, charge lights. Uh, and that goes right in there, like so. 
This is a difference apparently with the V2. Uh, you do have this uh, combined diffuser. Previously it was a set of two diffusers that you needed for this. Uh, thank goodness we don't need those two tiny pieces anymore and that it's just this one uh, piece that is connected and they just fit right in right in there we've got the pads down we've, we've got the speaker sorted um there is a suggestion with the pads if you're having some difficulties to actually uh trim the the little the little but butts there Tr trim the little butts if you need to um I don't think I will need to. We may do that after I do my fit test and see are we able to actually push the buttons. That would be that would be when we do it. Okay, so next is the USB C. Now it has a slot for the USB C right here. It's got little place it can it can rest, uh, but uh, you're going to want to have some double-sided tape for this, which I have. I have double-sided tape. Uh, I've got, I've got some of this stuff. This is double-sided tape. I've also got some like score tape as well. Uh, sheets. Um, the thing about this part though, uh, and the three and a half millimeter jack, uh, is that I'm going to want to do the soldering for this. I mean, not obviously I'm going to want to do the soldering for this not when we've got this thing sticking here, like in here. We're going to I'm going to solder the the points out here. I'm going to, I'm going to solder the points out here uh, away from this. Now, of course, I don't have my soldering iron on. So, we're going to do this We're going to do this now, I think. I think. So this Type-C to Advance SP uh, needs only two wires. It's got points for multiple things on it. It's got, it's got multiple solder points on it, but uh, we, only need, uh, we only need two wires on here. And they, um, quote-unquote, kindly made these as through hole wires through through hole points on these pads and they were so very kind to put what looks like a capacitor a tiny tiny capacitor right next to the pad for uh the positive lead so that's going to be fun they put they put this little little tiny ass thing right next to the pad you need to solder to that is just the kindest thing in the world for them to have done. Uh, anyway. Gonna need some wire. And the soldering iron to be hot. I've got some wire. Um, this is solid core wire. Uh, well, solid wire. Uh, 30 gauge. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of it. Uh, it's a mess, honestly. I shouldn't have gotten this stuff. Uh, instead, I've got a couple... Uh, spools of 28 gauge both stranded and uh, solid wire uh, coming from Amazon at some point and that will be what I end up using long term so uh, do we have a red and a black do we do we have a red and a black um, okay we have a red here and we have a black here the black has already been sort of used so I'm going to trim that I'm going to trim that and I'm going to like peel back some of this other wire here. Um, so the USB-C needs to go uh, to the charge port up here. Uh, this, these wires, we've got uh, a positive up on the top and a negative on the bottom. Uh, according to the wiring diagram, we need that positive uh, on the top to go to the second to last pin on the back 
of this. Yeah, the fifth pin down. So that's it's a set it's a set of three at the top and then one in the middle and then two at the bottom. It's that next to last one that needs this wire on it. Uh, and then uh, the negative is well, it's a ground, frankly. I don't really understand why it necessarily needs to go to the ground on this guy, but you know what? We'll go, we'll put it on here anyway. We'll put it on here anyway. Uh, right up, right up there. So that will be that, and that will allow us to charge uh, with a not a fast charger USB C. In fact, not. I don't even think that this will work with a USB C to USB C cable. This particular chip only really works uh, on a USB C to a USB A type connection uh for charging it will it will slow charge i don't know we may i may need to test this if you do attach this to a fast charger it may just charge slowly rather than quickly or it could blow up i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know i would hope that it wouldn't blow up but you never know you never you never know uh so because we're going to have something that's uh Note that uh, the board is going to be flat like this. This is this piece is going to be sitting underneath the board, like here. Uh, in fact, I can I can show this exactly. This will sit here, right right down here, and the board is going to sit above it on on those pegs. Uh, in fact, what I can do, I can actually test these buttons to see if we have uh, some satisfying clicks. We don't have any clicks on that. All right, yeah, those are clicking. That's clicking. Those aren't clicking. Oh, because I didn't. I don't have the pad there. Duh. Pad, get on there. Do I need to trim this pad? That that's the whole question I'm trying to answer here. Is do I need to trim this pad? The answer is no. E everything is clicking. I know you can't really see, so we've got the buttons here. Buttons are moving. Pretty satisfying, actually. The uh, the responsiveness on these buttons, yeah, that that's that's pretty satisfying. All right, good. Thing is, uh, I wish that this USB C area was a little bit better um, fit. For this particular board uh, i mean i get it there's different types of boards that one could use this is just the one that comes that's being sold on uh boxy's website uh, along with the three and a half millimeter jack uh it's just that if you're going to be selling one on your website that's fitting this uh it's probably a better a good idea to make sure that like absolutely sure that it actually completely fits uh, like snugly in the recess that's meant for it because as it stands if i want to get this port uh, aligned properly with this i'm i'm still going to need like tape here because these edges on here aren't enough to keep it centered and in place like it it moves around in there that's it's not that the tolerances are bad are awful on the spacing with this so it's like okay okay anyway stuff and things Moving along, it has been 46 minutes for me thus far uh, in the in the recording. I would like to finish this. Um, by the way, the USB-C is uh, the easy part. This is this is the easy part uh, of this. Now, the other thing about this is the guide does not have a suggestion 
for gauge of wire to use here. We're going to be running USB-C power over these wires to charge a 1700 milliamp hour battery. Keep that in mind. We're going to be trying to charge a 1700 milliamp battery, milliamp hour battery off of a USB-C to USB-A. We could also use the regular port. So that yeah, there are two options there uh, for charging, but keep in mind this is 30 gauge wire. I may be back with thicker wire with the 28 to be a little bit safer on uh, on the heat transfer. I'm I am not an electrician. I I am most definitely not an electrician, so I do not know how thick of a wire I need for running current over USB-C at slow charge rates uh, for charging this. So, yeah, I don't know how much heat gets generated and how thick of wires I'd need. Uh, I've got a kitty intruding. Hey, Ollie. He's off to the side. Okay, let me, let me prep the wire. Uh, I'm actually going to start by soldering uh, the wire to the positive and the wire to the negative and just leaving it. <laughs> I'm going to have a really long lead uh, at the start here. So, okay, you go to 30. Let's get this in there. Uh, let's leave. Let's do about that much. Uh, so with these, I don't like try to rip off the insulation with them. I just use it to break the insulation and then pull it off. Looks like I didn't actually give myself enough. I didn't give myself enough line. So grab that, kink that, and then pull. If it if it can, hello. Uh, that's the problem with the gloves too. They don't they don't make this particularly easy. Uh, so now I've got a, a little bit there of exposed wire. It needs to go to uh, the positive. It needs to be uh, it needs to be soldered to this positive lead here. Uh, ideally soldered uh, incredibly well to this positive lead here. So, soldering. This will be our first time together uh, soldering. Now I'm going to take the lid off my tip cleaner. Ah, come on, there you go. Uh, I'm running the best point that I currently have on here. Uh, this is as close to a needle point as I currently have that came with the kit. I have actual needle points on their way. Uh, they are in the mail uh, to make this just uh, a bit easier. I also have solder. I am, of course, using leaded solder. Now, I did mention that I would put on a mask before doing the soldering. So let me just explain the process before I do it so that when I do it, uh, I won't be talking because I'll have my mask on. Uh, so we're going to put some lead on the tip we're going to get our rosin flux we're going to put rosin on the pad we're going to take the iron put it on the pad add a little bit more if the uh if the solder on the tip doesn't flow onto the pad we'll add a bit more that will help ideally close up the pad. We'll add some tin to the wire. We'll, we'll put some tin on the tip and then we'll run the tip on the wire to get some tin on the wire. We'll then put the wire with a bit more flux on the pad. We'll get, we'll get the wire on the pad and we'll hit it with the, uh, with the soldering iron. And we'll do that twice. So 
that's my basic explanation of what I will be attempting to do, and hopefully I don't muck it up. Hopefully I don't muck it up. That that would be that would be sad. That would be quite sad. Anyway, I will be back with uh with my mask on. I'll I need to get my mask on and I'm gonna just do the soldering. Let's do this. Mask on. Tin the tip. What angle do I want to go at here? Probably this way. Okay. We have we have tinned the pad. Pad hath been tinned. I have to do that to the other pad too. May as well do it while I'm here. And I'm realizing I didn't even put the rosin on that uh on that pad. Then you know what? Let's do that this time. Let's actually Let's actually put some rosin on the pad. Yeah, that's a lot easier. See, that's the difference between having the rosin on the pad versus not having the rosin on the pad. You saw when I didn't have the rosin, it didn't flow off the tip of my soldering iron onto the pad. I had to add more solder. This pad didn't need as much solder because I had the I had the flux. I had the flux. The flux is with me. So we have that done. Uh, by the way, the the temperature of the uh, soldering iron. I did I didn't mention the temperature of the soldering iron. The temperature of the soldering iron is currently seven hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. This is a little bit higher than what is necessary to melt the solder uh, because we are dealing with precision here, uh, very, very small pads. Uh, the heat transfer is more difficult, to say the least, when you ha are dealing with very, very tiny areas like this. The, the very tip of this soldering iron is not 750. Let me, let me make that clear. The very tip of this soldering iron, not actually going to be 750. Uh, that's closer to the base of the iron and you're always losing heat, heat even millimeters away from the actual tip itself so you have to be very very mindful of that when when doing this type of soldering okay next is the red wire onto uh, the positive pad get that rosined up Get the uh, tip tinned again. Get uh, try to get the the wire some tin on the wire while I'm at it, and then get the wire on the pad as best I can. Get the tip on the pad. Give it a second, and there we go. That is the red wire on the pad. Huzzah. Black wire. Now for the black wire.
Okay, much, much better. Uh, so th with the black wire there, I had a little... I wanted to get ex more solder over the top because I noticed that it wasn't, uh, like, inside. It wasn't covered with solder. It was just, at, just adhered on the surface. I wanted to make absolutely certain uh, that it was fully uh, encased in the solder. Uh, now, I will be putting tape over these exposed leads uh, over this extra expose I will be putting the the uh, the heat tape over that uh, in the end and that should help with more uh, rigidity as well so that is basically that on the USB-C port side of things <laughs> for the moment I've successfully done that. I need to give myself uh, plenty of wire to work with here. Uh, in fact, I think that I think that about this much should be fine. So I'm just gonna come over here, snip that right there. So we are detached and away from the rest of the spool for now, until I need a whole bunch more to do the. Uh, to do the audio wiring oh boy that three and a half millimeter jack that's going to require a lot more uh precision so soldering because i've got another intruder next to me ahem <laughs> my babies i shouldn't actually touch the babies after doing that soldering with leaded <laughs> solder so let's let's not do that let's let's not do that put the cap on the pen this pen is very very handy uh i got the pen is very, very handy. I had two of them uh, from this MG Chemicals. It, com it came in a two-pack, rosin flux pens. Just, just, it's very, very, very nice. They're very, very, very nice. Okay, we've done We've done this. Let, let's talk now with the, uh, with the mask off for a bit. And I've cut uh, lengths on these wires. It's a bit too much length, but you know what? We're going we're gonna to go with that for now, considering that we need to... Uh, make sure that we have enough to basically wrap around wrap around the board to get up to the top here. Now, realistically speaking, I can probably cut down like half of this. So I'm actually going to go ahead now and trim to there. That gives me more manageable lengths to work with, uh, and I will have enough guaranteed. Uh, I will have excess, uh, in fact, with this arrangement. So, that being said, let's get these soldered onto their respective points. Now, the red one's going to be the most difficult here. The red one's going to be very, very difficult because it's right next to another pin, another pin, a pin one, or whatever, last pin on the line. Uh, for the ground, the ground goes over here on this side, down right down here. There's nothing to worry about there because that that's a gra it's a ground really like realistically it being ground i would think it should be able to just go anywhere but all right we're we're going to put it to the same ground as what's grounding the uh charging port peel that off mask on for soldering again
The red wire is hanging on by a thread, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna tin the tip here, make sure we've got the resin, and then redo that. But in the process, I have bridged the two connections. And apparently, I didn't do a good enough job with the red wire. Okay. The bridge is fixed. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, so the red wire, that's the problem with being so thin and a solid strand like this. This, uh, the wire broke. Uh, the wire broke in there. So gotta be real stupid careful with this. All right, that is much better. We've got Okay, we've got solder. I don't know how well we can see this, but we got solder over the red wire on just that one pin. So, I will, I will call that a success on the USB-C. If only that were the end. There's at least one more solder point with uh, installing the uh, screen. There's more soldering with installing this guy. There's, uh, yeah, there's, there is more with the three and a half millimeter jack. So, how you guys doing? It has been an hour for me, an hour and 11 minutes. Uh, this would be a great time to take a break, step away for a hot second, but just, just so that I'm aware, the next things on the agenda are to work on the four pins on here uh, we have four wires, which go to the four other pins on this port. So you know how we just had all that to install this one red wire? Well, now we have to do that four more times. And having done all of that, we're going to have to end off this video here. The build has taken and will take a very, very long time to complete. There will be several videos in this series, so thank you for watching this one. This has been a Taku Showboat. If you have enjoyed today's video, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. If you, you have not yet subscribed and hit the notification bell, consider becoming a member of the channel by hitting the great big blue join button and supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash if you're so inclined and able. I will be back on the next one. <laughs>